How's it going everyone, and boy oh boy do we have some Ubisoft news to go over in this video. Ubisoft has been a publisher that I used to be a gigantic fan of, and there's times that I still get into some of the stuff that they announce and reveal. I mean, they're finally taking Assassin's Creed to Japan. I can think what I want of Assassin's Creed, but Assassin's Creed in Japan will be pretty cool. But definitely, Ubisoft is one of those publishers that was one of my favorite publishers growing up, and nowadays it's definitely not not the case. We'll talk a little bit about disappointing news on that end. It looks like some slow sales as far as their titles go and Skull and Bones seemingly delayed again. Outside of that, we do have some positive stuff to talk about. Dead Space the Remake will be getting a brand new launch trailer come tomorrow morning, so a lot of reason to be excited about that and potentially some Spyro the Dragon news coming, we'll talk that at the end of this video. But starting things off, as tweeted out by Stefan Tatilo over on Twitter, Ubisoft facing surprisingly slower sales has cancelled three unannounced games on top of the four cancelled titles in July, planning $200 million in cost reduction, including natural attrition and divesting of non-core assets. And then he also noted, uh, Skull and Bones delayed again, it seems. Ubisoft mentions upcoming beta phase, adding Skull and Bones will now be released early 2023 to 2024. I imagine that means that fiscal year... Skull and Bones is a game that I feel like we've been talking about for so, so many years. I thought it was finally going to come out last year, then it got delayed, and now the game is just in that phase where I don't even know what the state of the game is, and you really can't take anything Ubisoft says with any concrete information, but... You know, Ubisoft is one of those publishers that I just think they went the route of trying to make, and I mean, this is so stupid for me to say, they tried to make a lot of money. Yeah, they tried to make a lot of money, but I think they completely disregarded what a large portion of their core consumer base, people that you can count on, really wanted from them, and they went the route of creating a lot of live service games. They went the direction of adding a lot of microtransactions to their games, and you know, ultimately a lot of publishers have done that and a lot of publishers have been successful at going that route. But Ubisoft had this, these core IPs, you know, your Splinter Cells of the world, um, your classic Assassin's Creed titles of the world, and so on and so forth, that have just completely gone to the wayside. Remember when Watch Dogs 1 was announced? Do you remember the fervor and the excitement that the announcement and reveal of Watch Dogs 1 generated? I refuse to believe just off Watch Dogs 1 not being a great game, did Watch Dogs just completely fall to the wayside? side. No, the same story happened with Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed 1 did not light people's world on fire, but they rebounded with Assassin's Creed 2, and now Assassin's Creed is one of those franchises that Ubisoft really relies on. Much to my dismay, the new style of Assassin's Creed isn't my cup of tea, and by the end, with Assassin's Creed Syndicate, uh, you know, commercially that game didn't do gangbuster numbers, but there is no reason why Assassin's Creed couldn't have rebounded, and let's just say Ubisoft decided to do a full-on remake of Assassin's Creed 2. Look, if we're gonna be remaking PS3 era games like we are with with the Dead Space remake, more on that in a little bit, why not remake Assassin's Creed 2? You tell me that wouldn't do well, it would do very, very well, but, you know, I'm not saying that's the route they should go, I just think, you know, just completely foregoing the classic style of Assassin's Creed and leaving people like me in the dust that really love those games, I mean, that's not something that completely excites me, um, and everything else. Why did it take this long to get a new Splinter Cell game? Why are Ubisoft constantly making decision after decision that really leaves the consumer thinking twice about supporting them. And again, a lot of these games are just getting delayed infinitely. Beyond Good and Evil 2. Like, I totally forgot about that game. Beyond Good and Evil 2 is one of the biggest train wrecks that I've been following over the last decade. Like, who knows what is going on with that game. And now Skull and Bones is another one. But I feel like Ubisoft needs to do some reassessment. I don't know if it's going to go the route of this is going to be another Microsoft acquisition. Uh, obviously, Ubisoft has so many quality IPs under their umbrella. I give you a Rayman, for example, as well. I'm not saying Rayman is going to be a revolutionary franchise for Ubisoft, but I feel like there's a core audience of people that would check out a brand new classic platforming Rayman game, and it would do fairly well. I'm not saying it would be generating Fortnite revenue, which obviously that's what Ubisoft is going after. Probably not to the extent of Fortnite, but creating these live service experiences, creating these experiences with a ton of microtransactions and getting the consumer to drop a lot of money in that one singular experience. I get it. There's a lot of money in that, but maybe also focus on games that can ultimately be profitable 
and are pretty much guaranteed to be profitable. That's just my two cents on that look. There's probably a lot of higher-ups, business executives that make specific decisions on where the direction of Ubisoft is going to go, and that's completely out of my pay grade. But just following Ubisoft over the last seven, eight, nine years after the release of really Watch Dogs 1, like, I remember the buzz and anticipation leading up to Watch Dogs 1. Yeah, the game was disappointing. It was an okay game, but... I feel like Watch Dogs 1, The Division 1, those games had an immense amount of buzz and anticipation, and I feel like Ubisoft has had a pretty difficult time of recapturing that level of interest, but, you know, they're gonna have their core IPs, their Assassin's Creed's, their Rainbow Sixes that are still gonna generate a lot of revenue, it's just, it's gonna be those core franchises, and hopefully at some point, they can also start investing into those other IPs, get Skull and Bones out, get work done on Splinter Cell, which I'm happy that they are gonna do a, a full-on remake of the very first game but man i feel like it's taken way longer than it should have but nonetheless that's my two cents on that and again super bummer to hear about skull and bones being delayed because i remember when that game was revealed i'm not saying it had the excitement level of like when watchdogs one initially got revealed but there was some excitement and some interest in skull and bones but i feel like that has just completely dissipated so take that for what you will all right moving on from that dead space remake this is a game i'm so excited for and i feel like dead space remake should be looked as a bit of a case study that hey it's been 13, 14 years since that PlayStation 3 era. If you want to remake a game from that era, uh, there is a market for it. In the case of Last of Us, I just think that was the end of the generation PS3 game. We got a PS4 remaster. It looks so technically impressive. And Last of Us has been a franchise that had been in the gaming zeitgeist for so long that that one was like a little bit like whatever like people weren't excited for it but i'm sure sony still made a bag off of it nonetheless dead space remake i really feel the buzz and anticipation for this game is palpable and the official twitter account noted humanity ends here drag yourself over to our youtube channel on january the 12th that is tomorrow 8 a.m pacific time to watch the premiere of the dead space official launch trailer so excited to check out the dead space remake the issue with this one much like last of us part one I see it over and over again in my comment section. That $70 price tag for a game that you're probably going to play for 10 hours. It's a hard price to pay. It'll probably be a game that I'll go through multiple times. But even then, for the person that's just going to buy the game and play through it once, I can understand for sure. $70 is a bit too much. Wait for it to go on sale. $30, $25, and maybe it'll be a more palatable pickup for you uh, then. You know, we're starting to finally see some of those launch PlayStation 5 titles that were at $70. Bucks, your Demon Souls is of the world. Now they're getting to the sub $30 range. Ratchet and Clank, for example, as well, easily found for under $30. I don't expect it to take that long with some of these games that are coming out gotham knights for example by the end of this year that game is going to be you know 20 bucks dead space remake by the end of this year i would say the game is going to be sub 30 bucks and you might not even have to wait that long but let's be um Let's be real. It's not going to take as long as some of those Sony titles that initially came out at 70 bucks. It's not going to take that long for these games to see appreciable discounts. Lastly, I do want to also note, uh, note that Toys for Bob put out a Twitter. Big moves and big mood for 2023. A lot of people with eagle eyes noticed that in the corner of this promotional image, Spire of the Dragon is there along with the 25th anniversary logo. And on top of that, some binary coding going on. A lot of people think this might be uh, hinting at a new Spire of the Dragon game being revealed. Look, I'd be all over that. I thought the Reignited trilogy was awesome and, again, received really well. Crash Bandicoot got another title with Crash 4. I know uh, the direction Crash is going now, not everybody's cup of tea, but nonetheless, a new Spire of the Dragon game would be pretty cool. Some of the Spire of the Dragon games that came out after the original trilogy were not very good, but, uh, you know, there were a couple interesting ones as well. Um... A lot. Of, was it Dawn of the Dragon? That that was the one that uh, I remember was pretty divisive. But nonetheless, uh, you know, hopefully we got more Spyro content. That's all I'm saying. I think there's a lot of potential for Spyro as an IP going forward. But that's going to do it for me. Again, Trouble in Paradise, it looks like, for Ubisoft. Hopefully they can find their footing. Hopefully they can do the things that a lot of us want them to do. Because they've got so many high-quality IPs under their umbrella. And I'm sure, I'm certainly forgetting quite a few of them. But, um, yeah, nonetheless... Not great news about Skull and Bones, uh, given everything going on. Dead Space Remake getting its launch trailer come tomorrow. And Spyro the Dragon, potential new title for its 25th anniversary to be revealed. I don't know, maybe. Maybe it's wishful thinking. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. As always, sound off down below. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. 
Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.